This week we're looking at the history of the high-flying Autobot Aces of the Air. These are the basics on the Aerobots. The toys that would become the original Aerobots were designed for the Japanese toy line Diaclone. However, Diaclone wound up being cancelled before the figures could be released, and they instead became part of the Transformers toy line, hitting shelves in 1986. The Aerobots were the first Autobot combiner team, five jet robots able to merge into one giant super robot. The group was made up of the reckless, fun-loving F-15 Eagle Air Raid, Reconnaissance Specialist Fireflight, an F-4 Phantom II whose tendency to daydream made him a dangerously distracted flyer, F-16A Fighting Falcon Skydive, the team strategist who preferred reading about aerial warfare to taking part in it, Slingshot, a sea harrier unpopular with his teammates due to his constant bragging, which was his way of covering up his own insecurities, and Silverbolt, a brave, determined Concord who suffered from a crippling fear of heights, who was appointed team leader by Optimus Prime in the hope that the responsibility would help him overcome his phobia. The five combined to form Superion, a single-minded warrior dedicated to the destruction of the Decepticons above all else. Silverbolt formed Superion's torso, while the smaller Aerobots became his limbs, each able to become either an arm or a leg, all totally interchangeable, able even to be mixed and matched with the other combiner teams designed the same way, including their Decepticon rivals, the Stunticons. The Aerobots debuted in the Transformers animated series late in its second season, at the tail end of 1985, ahead of their toys' release. They were constructed by the Autobots in response to the Decepticons' creation of the Stunticons, built out of ancient aircraft on Cybertron and given life by the megacomputer Vector Sigma. The arrogant Slingshot believed that Earth and the Autobots weren't worth fighting for, but Silverbolt was able to get him and the others to look beyond their own interests and take the Stunticons down. Still, the Aerobots weren't fully convinced of the rightness of the Autobot cause, until they found themselves sent back in time to the dawn of the war, where they experienced Megatron's evil firsthand when they helped save the life of the young Optimus Prime. After returning to the present, the team went on to appear throughout the remainder of the series, with the continued availability of their toys in 1987 ensuring that they stuck around right up to its final episode. They and the other combiners also enjoyed a major marketing push in Japan, where they starred in several pieces of exclusive media, including the direct-to-video special Scramble City and the sequel series The Headmasters. In the Marvel comic book, the Aerobots were built on Earth, with supplementary stories exclusive to the United Kingdom's version of the series, explaining that the Autobots had been inspired to create them based on a vision of the future from the Matrix. The team first saw action defending Hoover Dam against the Decepticons, though the mission nearly ended in disaster when Superion's single-mindedness endangered human life. They went on to clash with the Stunticons, human anti-robot militia Rat, and even G.I. Joe, but eventually the discontinuation of their toys in 1988 saw them phased out of the comic, the first of many victims taken offline by a cosmically powered Starscream. However, in 1990, their toys were re-released in Europe and Australasia as part of the Classics range, which led to the characters being brought back online to feature in a new run of stories in the UK comic, in which they served as members of the Autobot Earth Force unit. The toys were re-released again in 1993 in the Transformers Generation 2 toy line, now sporting new colour schemes and advertised with an unforgettable commercial rap. The aerial bots are taking their shots, some of both blast and combaticons, they can all change to be rearranged to form a super robot superior! 
This release saw the team make a handful of appearances in Marvel's Generation 2 comic book, with Skydive in particular getting a starring role fighting alongside Fortress Maximus to stop Megatron from stealing the Autobot spacecraft, the Ark. As both the first Autobot combiners and a unit of jets on a side famously made up mostly of cars and trucks, the Aerialbots were a distinct and memorable group, and the concept of an Autobot aircraft team is one that's often been revisited and reimagined by new Transformers series over the years. 2004's Transformers Energon, for instance, featured the Air Team, made up of stealth plane Stormjet, A-10 Thunderbolts Sky Shadow and Teradive, and tactical fighters Treadshot and Windraiser, who combined in the same interchangeable style as the original Aerialbots to form Superion Maximus. Rather than individual robots, though, the Energon cartoon presented these five as simply being parts of Superion, all controlled by his singular intelligence. Superion Maximus was one of four combiners from Cybertron's ancient past, who long ago entered stasis together to stand guard over a subterranean reservoir of Super Energon. Though awakened in the present day by Megatron, unlike the other Guardians, Superion Maximus refused to follow the Decepticon leader, and joined up with the Autobots to thwart the villain's ambitions. In 2009, the Energon toys were recolored to create a new version of the Aerialbots for the live-action movie universe, released as part of the Revenge of the Fallen toy line. This incarnation of the team shared the names and personalities of the original Aerialbots, with one exception. Hasbro had lost the trademark on the name Slingshot in the intervening years, and so replaced him with a new character, the small but fierce Air Razor. The Aerialbots also featured in the movie series tie-in video games, which expanded their ranks beyond a small five-man combiner team and turned them into an endless army of mass-produced Autobot flyers who served as generic enemies in the game's Decepticon levels. This idea carried over into 2010's War for Cybertron video game, which presented the Aerialbots as the Autobot counterparts of the Decepticons' famous jet legions, the Seekers, and also placed Silverbolt and Air Raid at the player's control for a mission to take down the Decepticon space station, Trypticon. Now, these are just some of the most prominent different takes on the Aerialbots. Various other interpretations of the team and its members have appeared in other toy lines over the years, and the original Aerialbots have continued to appear in comics and games. In the early 2000s, the team enjoyed a particularly significant role in Dreamwave Productions' first comic book miniseries, sacrificing their lives to save San Francisco from a nuclear strike. At times, individual members of the team have received standalone, non-combining toys, reimagining them with new aircraft forms. And their names have also often been reused, given to new characters with flying alternate modes, unconnected to the originals. The full original Aerialbot lineup returned to prominence in 2015's Combiner Wars toy line, with brand new, faithfully updated toys that were able to combine in their original interchangeable style. By this point though, Hasbro had also lost the trademark on Firefly's name as well as Slingshots, so the pair had to be renamed Firefly and Quickslinger respectively. Additionally, two new members were added to the group. Alpha Bravo, a helicopter out to prove his worth to his new teammates, who could take the place of any of Superion's limbs, and the original Autobot flyer, A-10 Thunderbolt, Powerglide, who transformed into a gun Superion could wield. A special box set of the figures was even released in Generation 2 colours. The release of the Combiner Wars toys was supplemented by a story arc in IDW Publishing's comic books. The Aerialbots had been introduced into IDW's universe only a few years earlier, initially consisting of the classic five members plus a sixth named Barrel Roll, based on a Minicon figure released in 2010, who was only around for three pages before dying in an explosion. 
The surviving Aerialbots later gained the power to merge into Superion when they were captured and experimented on by Megatron as a test of his new and improved combining technology. A catastrophic battle with Devastator resulted in the death of Slingshot and left Superion offline for some time, until Alpha Bravo and Powerglide volunteered to fuse with the team, making the Combiner whole once more. The restored Aerialbots went on to help save Cybertron's colonies from the rampages of Menasaur and Devastator, and foiled Galvatron's plans to conquer Earth. Though their ranks have changed over time, whatever their membership, these airborne Autobots remain the preeminent heroic combiner team in Transformers lore, blasting out of the past to defend the skies of the future. And those are the basics on the Aerial Bots. Tell me in the comments which is your favourite team member or incarnation of the group. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos about Transformers history and lore like this. And if you support the show on Patreon, you can get early access to new episodes.